I'm now live. I like how Instagram informs you that you're alive. It's like we were dead before, but you're not quite alive until you're Instagram live. So I just realized I don't have my cup of coffee on me. So anyway, how's everybody doing? I've got my IG live Q&A link up. Thank you, Jay. Uh, I've kept it up since yesterday. But I wanna talk about a couple of things that started yesterday. One is, you know, everybody is saying, everybody's wondering what's going on with the economy. Are we going into a recession? Are we going into a depression? And I think we're starting to see what actually is happening. So just to summarize the economy, and I don't mean, I'm not gonna make this all about coronavirus or the economy. We know where all the data is. We know there's 30 million people who filed for unemployment. We know that it's basically a shit storm out there, but trillions of dollars have been pulled out of the economy. We None of us have spent what we normally spend. We've been locked inside our houses, but the stimulus has replaced $2, tri $2 trillion worth of stimulus and more. Now it's about three or $4 trillion have replaced dollar for dollar the money that has been pulled out of the economy. But it's not gonna come back in the same way. So for instance, I was just in the bank this morning and I asked the security guard there, have, you know, there was a lot of people in the bank and we were all wearing masks and they only let two people at a time into the bank. But the woman who was the security guard said, we have just as many, we have more customers today than we had three months ago. So the bank, uh, was doing well. And I, here's what I think is going to happen. There's going to be a lot of bad news. So retailers are going to go bankrupt. You're going to have J. Crew. Uh, by the way, J. Crew just filed for bankruptcy. Then you're going to have, uh, you know, J. Hilburn filed for bankruptcy. That's a men's clothing retailer. J. Jill is about to file for bankruptcy. J. C. Penny is filing for bankruptcy. So important to realize. Any clothing retailer with the letter J as the first initial is, that's automatically bankrupt. But also, I was surprised, Brooks Brothers is gonna file for bankruptcy. Neiman Marcus is gonna file for bankruptcy. A lot of clothing retailers, we always think, oh, who's filing for bankruptcy? Restaurants. All the clothing retailers are going out of business because we're all buying our clothes now on Amazon and we realize it's fine. We know our measurements, it's kind of fine. And you know what, here's the, this is the acceleration technique at work. All of these retailers were gonna file for bankruptcy anyway. Like J. Crew was probably five years, three to five years from bankruptcy anyway. Coronavirus is accelerating everything. It's turning society upside down. In, it, society was gonna turn upside down anyway. It was gonna go like this. And instead it's gonna go like this. So robotics is gonna replace, you know, human workers much faster than, remember like a year ago, everybody was saying, oh my gosh, Andrew Yang, Yang Gang. Andrew Yang was saying, automation's gonna replace workers, we better have UBI. Well, guess what, Andrew Yang, uh, it's over. Like automation has already replaced all the workers. Like those, those jobs are not coming back. Everybody needs to think of what they're gonna do in the new normal. And I do think a UBI, some form of UBI will happen. If you listen to today's podcast that I did or yesterday's podcast that came out with Mark Cuban, much later, uh, you know, next week or later this week, I have a podcast coming out with Congressman Tim Ryan. I'm really exploring this idea of what is America 2.0. And I think that's happening now. So America 1.0 started with the Constitution, the Bill of Rights, freedom of speech, all this kind of stuff. I think there's gonna be an America 2.0 because we sort, of, we sort of got disconnected from the original intentions of the Constitution. And you could argue that in the Civil War, and obviously the Civil War was the worst event in American history, but the Constitution already kind of signaled, even when they wrote the Constitution, there was a big battle about slavery and its impact on society, and we, there was already, signaling that there was gonna be a civil war at some point. That was the battle between states' rights and federal rights. Well, guess what? We're seeing the same thing happen right now. Right now, do we follow the federal guidelines about reopening the economy? Do we follow the state-by-state -state guidelines? Who knows what's gonna happen? 
But I do think we need, you know, and Mark Cuban and I discussed this on my podcast yesterday. What does, what does a new deal, kind of like what Franklin Roosevelt did in 1933, what does a new deal look like now? What does what is a new constitution look like now? What, what are our civil rights? And I'm not speaking from a, you know, there's all these lockdown protesters. They want to open up. And you know what? I think the economy should be open, but I understand, you know, people are really scared. There's still a lot of uncertainty about the coronavirus. We don't know how it affects children. I mean, we think it doesn't affect children that much, but there's news reports that it might affect children in scary ways. So we don't fully know. We don't know if it comes back. We don't know if there's immunity. There's a lot of uncertainty and humans, more than anything, humans loathe uncertainty. I would rather have bad news than uncertain news. Like if you're in the doctor's office and the doctor says, listen, you're going to die. Well, what if he can't, what if he, if you say to the doctor, do I have six months? Do I have a year? And he says, I just don't know. That's scarier than knowing if I know I'm going to die in one year, that's less scary than I don't know if I'm going to die between one month and two years. So if you look at the stock market, a lot of times people say, why did the stock market go up today? The economy is really bad. The stock market doesn't depend on good news or bad news. The stock market depends on how certain or uncertain the news is. That's the important thing to remember. So there's a lot of uncertainty and that's what makes the lockdown, uh, the, the unlocking of the economy scary. Are we gonna suddenly go from 40,000 deaths to millions of deaths? Now, I think the answer is no, but some people think the answer is yes. And we can argue all day but there's no point in arguing. I find whenever I'm in an argument with someone on Twitter, it's usually someone who's anonymous. You ever find there's a lot more angry anonymous people on Twitter? It's because it's like Halloween. They're, they're in a costume, so their full personalities can come out. And I think, you know, not only are industries getting accelerated during coronavirus, but personalities are getting accelerated. For instance, domestic abuse. Domestic abuse is sadly on the rise during this quarantine. So what happened? Did suddenly, did suddenly all these people who weren't domestic abusers become domestic abusers because of the quarantine? Or were they always domestic abusers, but they, were, they kept themselves separated from their spouses, their children, whatever, and now that they're locked in, just they hear so many words from the people that they're locked in with that they suddenly start beating them? Like, I feel, again, Coronavirus, and I don't mean to make light of it, but coronavirus is accelerating personalities. If you were a jerk, but you were hiding it very well, now the ocean has come, the tide has come in, you're naked, and we all know you're a jerk. And I've seen this over and over again. There's a lot of people on, I've been following on social media that I really respect and really admire. And I've been so disappointed, and it's about 50-50. Some people I still respect and admire, and they're saying incredibly intelligent things. And some people I realize, oh my God, I thought you were really smart, but you're the biggest idiot I've ever seen. And not only that, you're an angry idiot. So it's really kind of, the tide has come in, not only on industries, but on individuals, on every aspect of our lives. So here's what I think is gonna happen in the economy. I'm gonna get through this quickly. I'm gonna go through some side hustles. I'm gonna answer some questions. I'm gonna look at the BS headlines of the day. Um, but uh, on the economy, I do think we're going to see a V in terms of the money that the money that we normally spend. We normally spend five trillion dollars a quarter. Obviously, that's about forty to fifty percent down this quarter. But that is going to shoot back up. It's going to be like a V. But it's not going to be what you think. I bet you in cities like particularly like New York City, but maybe all cities, sixty percent of restaurants are gonna go out of business. And that's tragic. I talked about yesterday, the opportunity there. You can, and I'll just quickly summarize, you can find what's called a cloud kitchen and you can make your own restaurant with one tenth of the cost of setting up a restaurant. And since everything's gonna be delivery now, you could focus all your profits very quickly on items that do well in delivery and forget about the rest of the menu. So restaurants will survive, the industry will survive 
but all the restaurants, storefront restaurants that you know about, 60% of them are gonna go out of business, which means that's about eight or nine million employees are gonna remain out of work. And that's sad. Clothing retailers, we already saw. J. Crew, J. Hilbrin, J. Jill, J. C. Penny, they're all out of business. Neiman Marcus, Brooks Brothers is going out of business. Macy's is gonna go out of business. All these clothing retailers out of business. Millions of workers more. The tourism industry, when are you, when are you going on a tour again? Or when are you gonna be a tourist again? So that, I'm not going to Europe to be a tourist. I might get locked out. So that's another eight million employees. So it's going to be scary. There's gonna be some unemployment. And I think there will be some form of government kind of FDR style New Deal where I don't think it's gonna be infrastructure projects like bridges or whatever. I, I'm hoping, and this is what Mark Cuban and I discussed, I'm hoping there's a New Deal that gives some form of UBI, and I'll get to that in a second, some form of UBI combined with teaching people the skills of AI, big data, robotics. I'll give you an example. Uh, a, a relative of mine has a business. He, um, he looks at big data and he determines who, who, and by the way, you're all, everybody listening to this is in his database. He has in his debate, database everyone who has ever bought a car. And because all of that is listed publicly with the state. So he buys all that data and he can predict using AI and big data when you're going to buy your next car. So he knows the, pa the buying patterns of everyone who buys cars. He knows what cars they like. He knows if you like a Toyota Prius, you tend to buy a car every two years. And then what he'll do is he'll inform all the car dealerships in your area for a fee uh, when they should proactively call you, hey, just so you know, we have a new Prius in stock. Why don't you come in and take a visit? We might be able to work out a deal for you. So that's how AI and data it works and big data and so on. It, to kind of basically to shove sales down your throat faster than maybe you would like, but that's the reality. That's happening. Those are skills that are, are, need to be developed. It's not like, it's not like when, when Trump says we need to come manufacturing jobs to come back to the US, I don't think he means we need to build tires again in Akron, Ohio. Nobody wants to, nobody wants to work in a factory assembly line making tires, but there's gonna be new kinds of industries that are gonna develop. And we need to be, when I say we, not me, the US is gonna be the leader, but I think now is gonna be a very fast transition because we're gonna see, we're probably gonna see a permanent, just when I analyze this, and I spend a lot of time analyzing this data, we're gonna see about 15 to 18 million permanent workers unemployed. Restaurant, the restaurant industry, about nine million people will be permanently unemployed. And that's sad, but it's going to happen. Uh, right now it's probably automatically four or five million, it's gonna go up to nine million. The tourism industry, we're probably gonna see about five, six million people unemployed. The clothing industry, we're gonna see millions of people unemployed. And that's permanent. So we're gonna to have to learn new skills. And I, do, I don't like to say the government needs to help us. I think there's opportunities without the government, but I do think the government will get in, involved. So I do wanna talk about some of the news I've been seeing. It's like every, again, this is why, this is why, oh, let me see what this is. Um, uh, un yes, you're right, Victoria. Unemployment can only pay so much. Right now, between now and the end of July, unemployment is paying unemployed workers more than they would have made in uh, the average job in the United States. Now, the problem is many people, I know many people who applied for unemployed who did not get unemployment. I know many people who applied for the PPP loans but did not get the PPP loans. So. There's gonna be a lot of transition and it's, it's horrible and it's sad and what I encourage people to do and I hope people are doing this is find GoFundMes that are supporting employees who are losing their jobs. Every little bit helps, but there's other ways too. And in fact, I'll jump quickly to it. Here's a few side hustles that I think are very interesting. And, and by the way, I don't think people should do one side hustle. I think you can do a collection of side hustles and then that will give you ideas once you start doing these side hustles and you're using your, you're exercising your idea muscle, you're writing down 10 ideas a day, you're gonna come up with ideas for businesses. So trust me, 
write 10 ideas a day, but do some side hustles and you'll start to think of business ideas. So for instance, here's, here's an amazing, I'm, I'm gonna do this side hustle because I just love this idea. There's a site called crowdmed.com. So remember I said the business model, the business model of all of these new businesses is somebody has an excess of something, somebody wants access to that excess, and then there's a platform in between. So CrowdMed is amazing. Let's say you have a headache and you have a sore throat and you have a stomach ache. You could, you could put up your, you could go to crowdmed.com, you could submit your medical case, particularly now when it's hard to get a hold of a doctor, and the crowd crowdsources your diagnosis. But here's the thing, you don't need to be a doctor. This is what I love. I hate, I don't like, I don't wanna to go to medical school, but I do secretly wanna be a doctor. So I'll get out my lab coat, I'll log into crowdmed.com, and I'll solve, you could, if you're a part of the crowd, you could help solve someone's medical case, and if it turns out, and then they use, what's called prediction markets, people bet on what the likely diagnosis is from the crowd. And if you help solve a patient's case, this is on crowdmed.com, believe it or not, this is a side hustle. You could be a side hustle as a doctor, even if you have never taken a single medical course like me. You could go to crowdmed.com, you can help people solve cases, and if you are correct, the patient will actually distribute money to all the people who are correct. You can make a ton of money on crowdmed.com even if you're not a doctor. And there are professionals monitoring everything. It's not as crazy as it sounds, but just check out crowdmed.com. I'm gonna look at it right now and see um, what cases are up there. Uh, I hope I can find it. Oh, yes. Here's a, here's, a, here's a potential case on crowdmed.com. It's called food pain tingling. And this is from Thomas, a 34-year-old male. He is Caucasian and his symptoms began four years ago. He, he lists all his medications. He takes multivitamins, he takes certazine, I don't know what that is. Here's his symptoms. Pain, numbness, and tingling in both hands, uh, and recently the pain and tingling has extended to the rest of the body, so right away, being the, they call it a medical detective, being the medical detective I am, I'm thinking neuropathy of some sort, and I'd have to know what his job is. Symptoms exasperated with use, and food and symptoms will resolve with rest and diet, still neuropathy. Triggers include brushing my teeth, so his nerves are sensitive, which is also related to neuropathy, washing something with a cloth, pressing buttons, touching paper, mm. repeated touching a phone screen, so that's, you're hitting the nerves in the finger, was diagnosed with carpal tunnel, I don't believe that's it, because carpal tunnel only refers to the, the, the nerves here, uh, and, and on and on. So. I can go in there now, I can so sign up for CrowdMed, I can help, so I can click the button, there's a button, help solve this case, and I can make some money. This is a side hustle. So that's the most brilliant side hustle I've ever saw. I wish I had come up with this idea. And they have trained medical professionals monitoring each case. So this way, nothing gets out of hand. And as you get more, you get credibility as you solve more and more cases, so it moves you up to uh, higher paying cases. So you can actually be almost like a doctor in terms of making money, you have no liability, and you can really solve medical cases. This is, this is driving me insane that I didn't think this, of this idea, so I love it. So crowdmed.com, side hustle number one. Here's another side hustle. Go to rentafriend.com. So not only could you could be a doctor without having any doctor credentials at crowdmed.com, you could also be a friend without having any credentials. Most people, to be honest, are not very good friends. But you could sign up for Rent a Friend, and right now in particular, there are a lot of people, a lot of elderly people who are lonely, who are struggling, who don't know, have nobody to talk to. You go to rentafriend.com, you can sign up, and you can make like 25 or 30 bucks an hour being a friend. And there's hundreds of thousands of people using this service. I'm gonna click this away. I love this next model. I don't know why I didn't think of it. I'm kind of, you know, the pet, I was talking to Robin, my wife the other day, and I said, you know, I wish, I always wonder, I've been doing podcasts, I, I, spend, I spend 30 hours a week at least doing podcasts for the past six years, seven years. I write every day. I just, 
I just finished another book and I write articles and so on. I don't really get paid that much to write. What I wish, I, I wonder, I sometimes take a step back and say, should I have just started another business? I was always good at starting businesses, but you know, I, 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 I enjoy what I'm doing, so I can't really regret it that much. But this business is such a no brainer. It would have taken like a month tops to start this business. So go to carvertize.com, C-A-R-V-E-R-T-I-S-E, and .com. And there are people who will advertise on the side of your car. And, and they will pay you a good amount of money per month. Like I'm looking at a picture right now, St. Francis Healthcare is on, is on this little Honda car at carvertize.com. So what a brilliant idea. And if you have a car, I don't, by the way, I'm not legally, I know how to drive. I'm not legally allowed to drive in New York State, Connecticut, New Jersey, or Pennsylvania. But, so I don't have a car. But if you have a car, you can go to carvertize.com and make a few hundred dollars a month. Why not? So that's carvertize.com. And again, a lot of these side hustles, if you kind of Google side hustles, it just says, oh, you could be an Uber driver. Uber drivers make like nine cents a mile. It's not worth it. But if you could get advertising on your car, that's probably worth it. Your car's gonna look ugly, but who cares? Do you really care what your car looks like? Now, here's another one. It's called slicethepie.com. And let me tell you something, an hour ago, I found this website, slicethepie.com. And oh, someone says, uh, why, why am I not allowed to drive? Well, I committed crimes with my car in Connecticut, Pennsylvania, New Jersey, and New York, and none of their computer systems talk to each other, so they all think separately. I need to get uh, my, I need to take a, I need to pay all these fines, and I need, which I've done, and I need to, but they don't communicate that to anybody, and then I need to take the driver's test again, and I need to take the written test, so, and I need to do it in all four states if I'm gonna drive in any one of the states. So I'm not legally allowed to drive and I'm never gonna legally be allowed to drive ever again. Didn't do anything bad, but I didn't do like a DUI or anything. Um, but that's, it is what it is. And I'm not a very good driver anyway. You know, here's an interesting statistic. Nine out of 10 people think they're an above average driver, which is of course impossible. Only four out of 10 will be above average. But I'm the one out of 10 who knows that I am an inferior driver. I have just, I have just brutalized every car I've ever driven in. I'm, I'm ashamed of it. I've hurt people, not killed people, but hurt people. And I don't really ever want to drive again. But, okay, slicethepie.com. Go to it right now, Sli or after this, slicethepie.com. I signed up just an hour ago and you fill out surveys or you write reviews of products and you get paid. So it doesn't sound like a lot, but I filled out one review about a car seat for children and I got paid 21 cents. It took me a minute. So in a minute, I made 21 cents, which doesn't sound like a lot, but if you do it all day long, you're gonna make a lot of money. And here's the thing. You also make money if you refer a friend. Like if I call a friend and I say, hey, Dan, sign up for slicethepie.com, but use this link and use this promo code that I give you, I get 20% of Dan's revenues for the next 60 days, and then I get 10% for the rest of his life for everything he makes on Slice the Pie. So if I tell all my friends and I have different promo codes, I don't have to do any more reviews. I'll just make all of 20% of their money just raking it in. So affiliate fees are a great way to make, that's called an affiliate fee, that's a great way to make money, but check out slicethepie.com. So we talked about CrowdMed, we talked about Slice the Pie, and we talked about Carvertize, which is a great idea. But I love CrowdMed. I'm gonna, I'm gonna be, go on CrowdMed because secretly I wanna be a doctor. I used to wear a lab coat all the time. One time I was in London and I was shooting a video. I was wearing my lab coat and I was shooting a video and this guy uh, comes up to me with this cameraman, people all around. This guy just comes straight up to me. I'm wearing a lab coat. Oh, look at my reflexes. This fell and I caught it. I must have been too enthusiastic because I was about to describe when I was a medical doctor. 
Oh, I can't even, I can't even set this up now. Hold on, hold on. They should make a better mic, mic stand. That's what I need. Uh, oh, let's move it, let's angle it. So I was in London and I was wearing my lab coat and this guy comes up to me and he says, excuse me, sir, excuse me. I'm having a pain in my shoulder, you know, what should I do? And I said, listen, I get it. Take, you know, three or four ibuprofen tonight and then go to your doctor in the morning and don't sleep on the, the shoulder. Try to sleep on the other side. And he says, thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much. And he starts walking up. The cameraman had to run after him and say, no, he's not a real doctor. But I don't know. Believe me, I've talked to a lot of doctors during this coronavirus and a lot of them I've had on my podcast, a lot of people I've interviewed for articles and just so I can understand, a lot of my relatives, nobody close, but a lot of distant relatives are doctors. I've interviewed so many doctors, they don't know jack shit about anything. Every doctor is just good at their one thing. They can't help you with a shoulder pain unless they got their PhD in shoulder pains. So you're just as qualified which is why I love this site, crowdmed.com. I signed up for it. I'm gonna be a medical detective. I'm gonna start solving these medical cases. It's gonna be great. So, crowdmed.com, carvertize, slice the pie, rent a friend. Let's see what else uh, we've got here for, uh, oh, this is a great site for side hustles. Quirky.com, have you heard of quirky.com? Q-U-I-R-K-Y.com. You could invent something like I was talking with my wife earlier, and sorry, Robin, I'm just gonna give the idea away completely. We were talking, you know, everybody carries these selfie sticks around. That's kind of a drag to hold the selfie stick. What if you had this little uh, drone that's the size of a fly, and it always was around you taking videos? And so then you could just click when you wanna say, okay, upload the last 15 seconds to TikTok, or upload this to Instagram or YouTube. So we wanna create the fly drone. Now, we're not gonna actually do it, but we could, with quirky.com, it's a crowdsourcing of inventions. So I can just draw the idea, upload it to quirky.com, and now I'm the inventor of this idea, and then other people in the crowd could say, that's a great idea, and so other people can contribute all the way to finishing the product. And then once the product starts selling, also on quirky.com, as the inventor, even if all you did was a drawing on a napkin and uploaded it, you start making royalties on all the sales. So they have one product that's uh, already 1.6 million people have signed up to buy this product that uh, it's a it's a earbud cord organizer. You can, you can wrap all your earbud t devices uh, around this thing. No, it doesn't get tangled. And they got 1.6 million orders for it already and it's about to be delivered. So it's a great, a great invention. Uh, and again, whoever was the inventor, he just uploaded a napkin drawing. The other million people in the crowd helped him and then everybody shares the royalties. The inventor gets the most of the royalties, I think, and then other, you know, it dep it's like a, a bartering thing. And that's another great side hustle I was not never even aware of. So there's lots of, things out there, like it's so disappointing that people think, oh no, I be oh, we gotta bring manufacturing back to Akron, Ohio. We gotta, start, we gotta start making tires again on an assembly line in Akron. No, you don't. I could be an inventor of a flying TikTok drone. I don't have to work at a factory. Or I could be a, a rent-a-friend. Or I could be a medical detective. Or I could advertise on the side of my car. Or I could do all of it, or I could review things on slicethepie.com, or um, what was the one I mentioned yesterday, focusgroup.com, something like that. And, or yesterday I mentioned ejury.com, you could sign up to be a mock juror. Or I can be an affiliate, I could refer people to slice the pie, or maybe ejury, or whatever, and make money that way. So it's worth it, and I'll put together, I'm gonna put together a whole list of what I think are interesting side hustles you could do from home, but there are many opportunities. now. I've talked extensively, extensively about writing a book and how to do it and I gave people a 30 day challenge. I added to that yesterday. The YouTube video will be on either my channel. I don't know, Jay, have you uploaded uh, yesterday's IG Live to YouTube? I describe extensively making an Amazon book in 30 days and how to sell it.
but I know Evan Carmichael also has uh, uh, all these IG lives stored on his YouTube channel. By the way, Evan, if you're logged on, I don't know if you are. Um, if you are logged on, uh, then I want to turn these IG lives into a podcast. I'll split the revenues with you 50-50 if, if you could help me with it. And see, there's opportunities all the time. So uh, I'm looking at Quirky, by the way, and I'm seeing all these things. Like here's a, 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 a doggy drinking fountain. And here's one um, uh, weird ways to get your outlets. I can't even figure that one. It's called the pivot power. Here's one, uh, uh, a duffel bag that, that charges your devices. All these people, all the inventors, maybe they just submitted a drawing and they're making money. Okay, but this is an important one. This is one where you can make millions of dollars. So it's called substack.com. And I'll tell you a story. In 2009, I was writing for the Wall Street Journal. And the Wall Street Journal said to me, hey, can we, can you do a newsletter for us, a subscription newsletter? We wanna get into the subscription newsletter business. And I said, man, that's great. Yes, sign me up. And then the editor in chief of the Wall Street Journal, he says to me, great, how do you, what do we do now? How do you do it? They didn't know how to do an online newsletter. They don't realize that if they had gotten into the online newsletter business, they would have been making so much money in profits. Subscriptions make so much more money than advertising and they're, they're kind of recession independent because people are subscribed for the long term. But anyway, so then a friend of mine, Tim Sykes and I, we created a whole infrastructure for creating online newsletters. And we just, we showed it to them, they weren't interested, and we never launched it. So that's why I'm jealous of this other company that I just found. Go to substack.com, S-U-B-S-T-A-C-K.com. In five minutes, you can create a four pay online newsletter. So for instance, let's say you have fantasy sports uh, predictions every week. Well, you could create an online newsletter, charge a dollar a month, charge $10 a month, charge $20 a year. You could create an online four pay newsletter with your fantasy sports predictions. Let's say you have stocks, stock predictions. Like let's say, let's say you love marijuana stocks and you have some insight into which marijuana stocks are gonna just zoom up. You can create an online newsletter in the next five minutes at substack.com. You know who uses this, substack.com? Matt Tabibi, who was a big political writer at Rolling Stone. So he, he stopped writing for Rolling Stone. He, he was probably making like two or 300,000 a year at Rolling Stone. He quit that job. He set up his newsletter at substack.com and he's probably selling his, his political newsletter. He's probably making millions of dollars on that. So you can make a lot of money in an online newsletter. Go to substack.com. I never even found this site until today. I'm putting in the work describing it to you, but I love this site. I think it, it's, you know, a lot of companies like, like my company has spent a ton of money building the infrastructure for an online newsletter, but you could just do it for free on substack.com and, and, and it, I just logged into it and I did it myself. It took me five minutes to set up and link it to my bank account. So boom, that, that, the whole online newsletter business, if you, know, if you are an expert on anything, you could set up an online newsletter. And you know what I would say? Even if you're not an expert, become an expert. So for instance, what if you find the best businesses for sale or the best online businesses for sale or laundromats for sale? You could be the newsletter for, about laundromats for sale and put it on substack.com. You could set up 10 newsletters. You could be the newsletter for fantasy sports. You could be the newsletter for some category of stocks or investing or peer-to-peer, -peer, who knows, anything, Bitcoin, whatever. So real estate, here are the most interesting houses in every city, newsletter every week. Or here's the most, here, here's the underground, the underground restaurants in every city you could take your day to, uh, newsletter, charge $1, uh, you know, $1 a month, $5 a month, whatever. So there's so many, uh, opportunities to create a side hustle even on just substack.com. So I highly, you know, yesterday I talked about teachable.com for an online course. I talked about Amazon for books. Substack.com, I think everybody should set up their own newsletter. It's the most lucrative industry you could be in. How do you sell a newsletter? Tomorrow I'll give like a mini course on copywriting, everything I know about copywriting. And again, 
I'm just doing this for free. Uh, uh, oh, by the way, I see Sudafed trending. I hope you don't mind. I want to click on this. Are they now saying Sudafed is a cure for coronavirus? Uh, oh, no. Sudafed was found in Trump's desk. So Sudafed is trending. It's a good way to advertise. Sudafed, you probably paid Donald Trump a billion dollars and you just got the best advertising ever. Congratulations. So uh, let's see. Hold on one second. Uh, I talked about all the side hustles, or most of them. Uh, I do want to address, like, there is, there's so much just bad data out there. And I know I've talked about this before, but then the newspapers just incre keep increasing the bad data. Like, again, I saw this headline again. Uh, coronavirus is causing damage to the world's oceans. And I'm thinking, are you kidding me? Like, what happened to... I thought global warming was causing damage to the world's oceans, and now global warming, magically, instead of reaching a tipping point of global warming, I thought we were, it was already too late for the world, six weeks of everybody just sitting at home watching TikTok videos, and global warming is gone. Like, there's no pollution over China, no pollution over the US. But So, what are the oceans complaining about? I kind of feel like the Pacific Ocean must have gotten upset that it was no longer in the news anymore, it complained to its PR firm, and the PR firm was like, what are we gonna do? Everybody's been sitting inside. They haven't been using the oceans. So here's what the articles say. Everybody's throwing out surgical masks, and it's ending up in the ocean. Are you kidding me? You're gonna complain. First, you were complaining about not having enough surgical masks. Like everybody in the media was saying, we don't have enough surgical masks. Now you're saying all the surgical masks are in the ocean, and it's ruining the world's oceans? Do you know how big an ocean is, the Pacific Ocean is bigger landmass than all of the continents in the world combined. A surgical mask or a million surgical masks are not gonna pollute the ocean. So everyone needs to relax. The other thing is, uh, you know, I, I love how the new, like only coronavirus is allowed to be in the news. Nothing else could be in the news. Like last week we had we had aliens, we had uh, unclassified, the government made video footage unclassified of UFOs, and this didn't even register in the news. I mean, should, I mean, if this was a serious thing, I would think Trump would be all over the, the Space Force, but he's not. By the way, speaking of the Space Force, May 29th, looks like, look at the Netflix trailer, it looks really fun. There's a show with Steve Carell about the Space Force looks like a sitcom or a movie or something. It looks kind of kind of funny. By the way, also in the news, Elon Musk has a new kid as of last night. But here's the interesting thing, and this is related to something we talked about last week about dopamine. Elon Musk was tweeting about Tesla, like, oh, about these weird EPA tests for Tesla. And then suddenly someone asked him, hey, did you have a kid yet? And Elon Musk responded, yeah, a baby boy, just born. And then he went back to tweeting about Tesla. And I was reading um, in this book called The Molecule of More, uh, recommended to me by Professor uh, Huberman from Stanford, who's gonna be on my podcast. Uh, the Molecule of More suggests that if someone is, is just addicted to that dopamine boost, then all they want is more and more and more in terms of you know money or Twitter likes or Facebook shares or whatever, and they might not have as good family relationship. So here his baby was just born and he's just tweeting about the EPA. I'm just curious, you know, maybe if that's a, a dopamine thing, but who knows. But what's what's interesting is that, um, excuse me, what's interesting is that he put up, he, he tweeted that he was going to sell all his belongings, including his house. So he did today put his house up for sale. It's, it's a 2,700 square foot house. It's like, for a house that's kind of, I wouldn't expect a billionaire, I thought a billionaire would live in like a 10,000 square foot house. But he lives, he has this 2,700 square foot house in LA and he's putting it up for sale for nine and a half million dollars. Are you kidding me? Who would pay $10 million for a 2,700 square foot house? It's gotta be the stupidest buy in the world. So I kind of think he thinks real estate's gonna tank or maybe he needs extra cash. You know, that's his, I think that's his sixth kid. So we'll see. Um, 
What else do we got here? Uh, oh, by the way, Warren Buffett had his annual meeting. You know what? Forget about Warren Buffett. Screw Warren Buffett. I'm sick of him. We're going to do some Instagram, some questions. Mayor de Blasio says New York City won't open until September. What do you think will happen in New York City? Mayor de Blasio is an idiot because Central Park, here's what happened. This weekend, Central Park probably had 100,000 people in the park. So I don't care what you think ethically about that. That's just the reality. People are going outside. They weren't wearing masks. They were not social distancing. And by the way, they've been doing this for a month and you know, hot, new hospitalizations in New York City are going straight down. So it's not increasing the, you know, we're, we're getting into summer. It's not increasing the uh, uh, pandemic or whatever. Mayor de Blasio is an idiot. Again, I was just at my uh, Br Chase branch and it was packed. People are outside walking around. Everybody's wearing, most people are wearing masks except in the park or people jogging or whatever. It's not a big deal. You, you do a little, Mayor de Blasio, do a little bit of research on how they've studied this virus being transmitted. It's not, it's not like it hangs in the air and you walk into it and you get it. You kind of have to be around other people who have severe symptoms for a long period of time if you're gonna get a severe version of this virus. And you only care if you get a severe version. If you get a mild version, congratulations, you might be immune now. So to say New York City won't be open until September is kind of brain dead because the average savings of a person is only $400. The stimulus check was $1,200. How are people gonna survive? How are people gonna eat food? And I know you could say, oh, well, starvation isn't as serious as death. The CDC says there's only 37,000 deaths in the entire United States. And unfortunately, most of them are in New York City or around New York City. So what about the other 48 states? And now, even in New York City, New York City's got 8 million people. There's 30 million people live around New York City. The, the deaths in, New York, in this area are about, about 30 or 40,000 out of 30 million. So you're gonna deprive people the opportunity to feed their families because you just wanna make sure, no, you know, I, I don't even know what you're thinking. And again, a lot of businesses are open. It's just the businesses that are going out of business. Restaurants, clothing stores, you know, uh, bars, event centers. I don't know what people are thinking right now. And I try to understand, look, I'm not saying don't do a lockdown, do a lockdown. If you're legitimately scared, what's gonna happen to me, what's gonna happen to my children, and so on, then figure out ways to do side hustles, keep people indoors. There's gonna be more stimulus, hopefully. But to have the government just regulate so much of our lives, at, particularly at this point when we have a lot, we've flattened the curve, the healthcare system's not overwhelmed, we, we kinda can see there's a lot more certainty right now. Just reopen and let the economy figure this out. Don't think you're smarter than millions of people and make, don't make decisions for millions of people. Uh, what do I think will happen to stand-up comedy and clubs? Stand-up comedy is gonna be a shit fest because who is gonna wanna, I don't think I wanna do this, who is gonna wanna take their date out to some dirty hole-in-the-wall club to, to get watered-down drinks and see a bunch of mediocre comedians tell jokes? I don't know if stand-up comedy is gonna do that well, but you know what, I think these are one of those things it's okay to not know. We have to be comfortable with uncertainty. Now, that was my answer as a club owner. As someone who performs in clubs, I will perform in clubs as soon as stand-up comedy opens up again. And I already have one gig scheduled for Winnipeg, uh, Canada, and another one in Palm Beach, Florida, and potentially one in DC once DC opens up. So we'll see. Um, let's see. Uh, it's a good question. Do you put your best chapters of a book at the beginning or the end of your book? It's an interesting question. A book should tell a story. So even in my 30 day book challenge, figure out you're the hero of that book. So, and you're telling your personal stories. The way I've described it, you're telling your personal stories. Make sure there's the arc of the hero in any book that you do. So you're gonna have good chapters in the beginning, good chapters in the middle. You wanna close strong so people write a good review. You don't want the book to kind of just kind of, you know, level off and, and it's disappointing. So you're gonna have to have good chapters throughout, 
But the way you have good chapters throughout is study the arc of the hero. So the arc of the hero really, in a one minute summary, is the hero is sort of gets a call to action, doesn't want to do it, but then is, there's an inciting incident which forces the call to action. So Luke Skywalker wanted to leave the planet, but his, he didn't want to because he wanted to help out his Uncle Ben or Uncle whatever. And uh, this old man comes up to him and says, Luke, your father is the evil ruler of the galaxy. I need your help. Luke's like, nah, I can't do it. But then the inciting incident is his aunt and uncle are killed. He, by the way, he doesn't shed a tear. He's like, okay, let's get out of here. No tears for the aunt and the uncle. Meet, and, then, and then the arc of the hero, you meet new friends. Your problems get bigger and bigger and bigger. And your new friends help you solve those problems. Then you solve the biggest problem of all, and then you return back to tell the story. That is the arc of the hero. It's the story of Jesus. It's the story of Luke Skywalker. It's the story of Harry Potter. So even a nonfiction book, even a tweet, if you can, should have the arc of the hero in it. Um, is there a particular style for doing newsletters? Not really. Just make sure you teach in every single newsletter issue. That's the key. Provide if your newsletter is $20 a year, every issue, put out one issue a month or four issues a month, whatever you want, but make sure every issue has real value that makes people think, boy, I'm glad I spent that $20. So well, uh, casinos, what's gonna happen? So good question. Casinos, all out of business, it's gonna all move online, period. Nobody in their right mind is going to Las Vegas or Atlantic City right now. That Las Vegas, sadly, is gonna be a pit of older people who bought houses and retired there, and the whole city is just gonna be a disaster. So, what do I think of MIT Online Business School? You know what, I don't know. I'll look into that. I don't really like business school. I think, why do you need a business school? The only way, the only way to learn about business is to actually create a business. I knew nothing about business probably until my 10th business. I made so many mistakes. I mean, I wish I could teach them, but I don't know if you could learn them in a course. So many mistakes. I could just list them over and over. I do think it is possible, and I describe this in my next book, I do think it is possible to skip the line in business. And, you know, part of it is doing things like what I described earlier with Substack or making an online course or learning negotiation techniques, which I've described in other IG Lives. Uh, so, uh, by the way, I love playing, I, I'm going to start, I'm going to start doing this more and more. I'm going to, I'm encouraging my children to learn poker, play online poker, see how you do, see if you could, particularly my daughters, because there are not that many, there are not that many women playing online poker or poker in general. And so if you could be the only person in the room doing what you do, you'll stand out on a resume and people will hire you, you'll get more opportunities. Trust me on this. The fact that I played chess and I was a chess master, that got me into graduate school. It got me a job I was totally unqualified for. It helped me raise money as a hedge fund manager when I had zero experience running a hedge fund. If you can do something that distinguishes you, you'll always stand out. It's very important. Um, so, oh, here's an interesting thing. I don't know why this is happening, but Carnival Cruises are opening up in early August. Are they kidding me? Who, who, wants, who is that desperate to get into a buffet line that they will start taking Carnival Cruises uh, starting in August? Almost all the cruises had, were infected with coronavirus a month ago. If, it, if there's a second wave, why do you want to be trapped on a cruise? But people are obsessed with getting food for free. They want, they're that desperate to stay on a buffet line. But here's the thing. Here is the interesting thing. Carnival Cruises will let you take a cruise for as cheap as $28 a night. So for cheaper than your rent, you can get a place to stay on a boat and all your food for free for a year. Just stay on the cruise for a year. Just keep renewing. $28 a night. Like you could, with just $10,000, you can eat for a year for free, live for a year for free, and travel all around the world and write your novel, do side hustles, whatever. So I do think there's an interesting opportunity, maybe you could create a documentary, 
stay, go on a carnival cruise, book your cruises for $28 a night for the rest of the year. And I don't know, write your novel or do your side hustles. It seems like, and travel to the Bahamas, travel to Bali or wherever these cruises go, travel to Alaska. It seems like a interesting thing that it's only $28 a night and you get all food for free. They're, they must be really, really desperate. Uh, so, uh, oh, this is an interesting thing. Everything Corona, everything with the word Corona in it is doing a lot better than I thought. So Corona beer, everyone thought at the beginning of this, Corona beer would just go out of business. The beers, Corona beer sales are skyrocketing faster than any other beer. Not only that, Corona porn on Pornhub is apparently skyrocketing. Like they have all these porn scenarios in, in a empty Wuhan. So a guy's walking around Wuhan and you know, he runs into a female survivor, one of the few female survivors, and then boom, everything happens. And I was reading an article, and I, I read porn up for the articles, and it said, uh, the, the creators of one of these videos said, we knew it would be, we knew a, vi a video like this would go viral. And I don't even think he realized it was a pun when he was writing this or saying this. So anyway, Corona porn, if you create Corona porn, it's probably gonna be uh, popular. Now, BS headline of the day. Uh, I just saw this headline, I'm looking it up right now. Uh, uh, gasoline demand shows sign of, signs of life. Okay, just common sense. For two months, everybody's been locked in their house. And now guess what? 20 states have already started partially reopening. So duh, of course, gasoline prices are gonna go up. You don't need to tell us, we're not idiots. Oh, you mean when nobody was using gasoline, prices went down, and now that people are using it, prices are going up? That's your top headline, CNN or whatever news network? Here is the legit headline of the day, the best headline, and I think I think this is actually a real smart article. Go to my favorite site, cosmopolitan.com. Believe it or not, all of their articles are the God's honest truth. It's the best articles on the internet right now. Here's, here's the top article. Eight indoor date ideas for couples stuck inside during COVID-19. This is a great idea. I'm married. We've been stuck inside for, for COVID-19. So here's like a, 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 an example. Do a cute throwback to your first date. So Robin and I, our first date was she had contacted me and said, oh, I want to um, I want to pick your brain. Can we have coffee? I want to pick your brain about marijuana stocks. And I said, sure. And then the day of, I said, I can't make it for coffee, but you want to do dinner and we'll go to Nobu. And she said, okay. And so we go out to dinner and she's talking about marijuana stocks and I got so bored. Like, ugh, I don't want to talk about stocks. So we started talking about kids. We started talking about relationships. It was three hours before we even ordered our food, which you know is a good sign. And then I just kind of fell in love during the dinner. And I think having a throwback to that first date, it was, it was at Nobu, it was a great sushi restaurant. That might be a fun quarantine indoor date. Or here's another idea. In, initiate a game night double date. So I can call up a friend of mine and say, hey, get your husband or wife Let's play bridge on Zoom or some card game on Zoom. It's a great idea. Uh, what's another indoor date idea? Uh, create fancy cocktails together. Perfect. I don't really drink that much, but I'll create a fancy cocktail and maybe sell it in my, uh, my cloud kitchen, which I described yesterday, how you can create your own restaurant for delivery using a cloud kitchen or what's called a commissary. So. This is a great article that I never even thought. Eight indoor date ideas for couples stuck inside during COVID-19. It's at cosmopolitan.com. Good job, Cosmopolitan. Bad job, CNN, for, with the boring headline, gasoline prices uh, show signs of light, life. Boring, that's the worst. By the way, another fun thing, Tom Cruise is gonna film a movie with Elon Musk in space. So I'm curious to see how that happens, but Elon must have been in the 
in the news a lot uh, lately. He's done all these weird tweets. He's selling his house. He just had a baby. Uh, and now he's doing a movie with Tom Cruise. It's kind of fun. Probably think it's probably fun, but maybe a little weird to, to be Elon Musk. Uh, let me see. Uh, I'm going to answer some questions. Uh, any good ideas for making smaller, quicker money while working on the big main ideas? Well, I just answered that, and I'll summarize again. Go to carvertize.com to advertise on your car. Go to rentafriend.com and sell your services as a friend for people who are lonely or the elderly who need help or whatever. Go to um, uh, uh, slice, what is it, the sliceofpie.com uh, and, and you get paid for giving reviews, but you also get paid if you refer friends. There's also focusgroup.com. There's ejury.com where you could be a mock juror. There's my favorite, which I'm signed up for, and I'm gonna be, I'm gonna use this, crowdmed.com, where people put their illnesses on crowdmed.com, and then the crowd crowdsources a solution. And there's doctors monitoring this, but you don't have to be a doctor. They call you a medical detective, and you move up in rank as, you know, in a Yelp-like system of reviews and so on. So I could start off as the lowest level medical detective, but move up as high as other doctors. And you'll get paid for the, the better your advice, your medical advice is, the more you get paid, which is how it should be. Like, why should I go to medical school for eight years when I could just be a medical detective at crowdmed.com, have a few doctors oversee it, and start making money giving medical advice. This is like my dream come true. They should do that. They should do legal, crowdlegal.com, because I want to be a lawyer too. But I don't want to go to law school. And I can't unless you live in Utah. You can't just take the bar exam. So I've always wanted. I've even given talks at law firms, and no one, you know. But I'm not allowed to be a lawyer. They'll pay me to give a talk to teach the law to all the lawyers, but I can't actually be a lawyer. So that's bullshit. I don't want to go to law school, I don't want to go to medical school, but sign me up for crowdmed.com. Then the most important kind of side hustle idea, check out substack.com, check out the people who are using it, and uh, trust me, you will make a ton of money doing a newsletter. It is unbelievable. You'll be able, when I say you'll be able to quit your job or make a living, trust me on this. Again, I'll tell one story which I already told, but a friend of mine, I think I only have like a minute or two, a friend of mine, this is 10 years ago. He lost his job. He moved to like Oklahoma, rural Oklahoma. He had no money at all. So he was gonna, he was gonna self-publish a book called, you know, Stocks for Telecom. And I'm like, ugh, that's the worst idea in the world. Call it 100 stocks that will double in the next decade. And sell, don't sell it for $10 like a book. Sell it for $200. So he did this. He sold just a thousand on a service, probably just like Substack, and he made two hundred thousand dollars. And he hasn't looked back. He's, it's changed his life. He's made real wealth in the past ten years just selling newsletters and courses and so on. So that's amazing, and it changed his life. He didn't pay me back money he owed me, so I dropped him as a friend. But despite that, it changed his life. I'm really happy for him. He got married. He had kids. Everything. He's a happy person. And you can do this too. There's no reason why anyone can't do it. So now I have a minute 25 left. Uh, we talked about side hustles. We talked about the BS headline of the day and the, and, and the best headline, which was indoor dates you can do with your loved one. We talked about everything from quirky.com to my favorite crowdmed.com. We talked about the latest with the data, uh, latest with reopening. And feel free to ask me questions on Twitter, or email me at altature at gmail.com. I'll save this video immediately on my IG stories. We covered a lot of ground today. Then later I will upload it to YouTube or on Evan Carmichael's channel. You can also find it on YouTube. I'm gonna talk about copywriting tomorrow. I'll do a mini course on copywriting, which is the key to making a successful million dollar newsletter. And thanks so much for coming and I will see you tomorrow and check out this on all the places I'm gonna save it. Thank you so much, everybody. Bye.